All right. We got to talk about tables. Got to know this early. All right. In the last video, I showed you pivot tables and there was a step in there where when we added new data to the source data that the pivot table was tied to, we had to go and change the source that the pivot table was looking at because it didn't automatically include the new data. So this is how we do this. All right. Now, remember this source data, this exam cycle and all these exam takers. We're gonna go to format as table and we can pick whatever we want. Let's pick this blue. Table does have headers. Okay. Now, let's quickly make a pivot table. Insert. Pivot table. New worksheet. Okay. Put exam cycle in the columns. Score in values. Exam taker in rows. Fine. Now let's do our pass fail. Go to exams. Pass fail like we did in the previous video. Equals if C2 is greater than or equal to this 75. And again, we have to do the uh, absolute cell reference, F4. Then put in the capital P. Otherwise, put in a capital F for pass or fail. Now see what the table did. The table took care of the entire column. We didn't have to drag it down. So let's add somebody else and see what happens. So Elsa was June A and Elsa scored a 91. See, the formula took care of it. Okay, let's go back to our pivot table. You see, we don't have the PRF. But all we have to do, click inside the pivot table, right click, refresh. There is our pass or fail. Let's take out, let's take out the exam cycle and then put this up here. All right, and we don't need this grand total. Go to design. Grand totals, and we don't need subtotals either. Cool. Now let's do some flash fill exams. Let's insert a column just to make some room. Let's look at month. Now, flash fill. I want to pull out the month. I don't care about the cycle, whether it's A, B, or C. I just want to know about months. So I'm going to put April and then write April again. March. And now Excel noticed that I have a pattern going and it's asking me, is this what I want to have happen with the pattern? I'm going to press enter. There we go. Now we have the month separated out. Now go back to the pivot table, right click, refresh. There's our month. And let's, uh, let's take out exam taker and put month in the rows. And rather than a sum, I'm going to change this value field settings or we'll put average okay 
So the average failing in April was 67. Average passing, huh? They all stick around about 85, 86. Pretty neat. We could do some more. Let's say exam taker, put that under month. Now we can see, all right. So there you have it. Put things in a table. You gotta do that. Get in a habit of putting data in tables so that you can protect the integrity of your data. You see how when I added Elsa down at the bottom, she was automatically absorbed into the data set. There you go with Excel Ignited and I will see you next time.